God bless you on this morning. We are so grateful that the Lord woke us up, gave us life and strength and health, a reasonable portion of health and strength, and we're glad to be in the worship service with you on this, the second Sunday in the year of 2021. Uh, it is but for the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, and great is his faithfulness. We thank God that you have tuned in. We hope that you enjoyed the worship and the praise and uh, our singers. And, and now we're getting ready for the word of God. I do want to just plant a seed uh, in, in, uh, before we get started on today. Uh, this month, we're entering into a time of fasting and prayer. Starting on tomorrow, January the 11th through January 31. Uh, we will be in 21 days of fasting and prayer, seeking the face of God uh, for uh, the, his deliverance and special healing. Also during our prayer and fasting time on the 31st, the final day of the fast, on the fifth Sunday of this month, uh, will be our first fruit Sunday. Amen. And we are looking for you, those of you that want to join in and leave a first fruit gift Amen. Uh, uh, to the Lord, as you sow a first fruit offering, which speaks for you for the rest of the year. This is not your tithe. It's not your regular offering, but it's a special gift that we here at Old Path sow in the first month of every year. Amen. Asking God to do miraculous things throughout the year and the days ahead. So we'll be coming more uh, with more details. I'll be preaching about uh, for the next few weeks about prayer and fasting and uh, sowing in this very special time. Amen. And uh, we want you to connect with us. We want you to join with us. Tell your family and your friends, hey, go to Old Path Miracle Cathedral on Facebook. Like us and share us. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and our other forms of media. We would love for you to be a part of this great ministry. We love that you tune in every Sunday, amen, and you give your support. And as the Lord speaks to you, uh, we ask you to share with us in this great ministry so that we can continue to bring you, amen, what God has given us for a time such as this. Like us, share us, connect with us, amen, and you'll be glad that you do. I say, I tell anybody that becomes a part of the Old Path family, if God, bring you, if God is bringing you to Old Path, he's trying to get a miracle to you. God bless you. So we're going to the word of the Lord on today. I want you to grab your Bibles. Once again, amen, whether you have an electronic device or an actual Bible, I love to read from the actual scriptures. We're going to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 58, very familiar passage of scripture, amen, as we prepare for our 21 days of prayer and fasting, uh, and I'm expecting God to do miraculous things, amen, in the days ahead, in this, even in the midst of this fast, as we set ourselves to consecrate before the Lord and prepare ourselves uh, to bring a special gift to God, amen, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. I want to lift up for you reading verses 6 through 8. And the word of God reads as thus. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And thou bring the poor that are cast out to thine house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health spring shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be your rearward. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Father God, we ask you and thank you for preaching power. We ask you, God, to illuminate us through the word. We ask you to give us understanding, God, so that we may 
not just know your word, that, that we may be the living epistles being read of men, that we are able to live and operate our lives through the word. I thank you, God, for pulling down strongholds. Thank you for breaking generational curses. I thank you, God, because you're doing a new thing even in this year already. And we thank you, we adore you, and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. As we look at these scriptures, we're about to enter into a season of fasting and prayer. For the next 21 days, we're embarking upon a spiritual journey that will give us power with God. Uh, it will also bring healing to our bodies and cause God to prosper us in this new season. Also during this time, we're looking to sow into the Lord what is known as our first fruit seed. During this time of fasting and prayer, over the next few weeks, we will be preparing ourselves through prayer, fasting, and sowing in anticipation of God's grace going before us in the year 2021 and beyond. Uh, for God's grace to go before us. We want the Spirit of God to go before us. We want the Spirit of God uh, to take control of our future, uh, no matter what lies ahead. For God's grace to go before us, this means we're asking God's favor, his goodness, and his kindness to literally get out in front of our lives and so to speak, direct traffic each month of this year. Even before we get there, we're asking God to move. In other words, we're asking God to lead our journey throughout this year before we enter into each phase of life. We don't know what's going to happen from day to day in this life, but through prayer, fasting, and sowing, we are literally asking God to prophesy to our days ahead. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know that he, he's holding our hands. Well, Pastor, what do you mean? We're asking God to prophesy to our January, our February, and our March. We're asking God to go before us in our April, May, and June. We're asking God to get out in front of and remove whatever that is evil, tragic, or counterproductive in our July, August, and September. Whatever thing uh, that is planned or out in our December, October, and November uh, anything that will hinder our progress or process, we're asking God to go before us as we prepare for the days ahead. And this has been an eventful year already. And I don't know about you, but I understand that I need God to go before me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Lord, go before us and Take away uh, anything that will cause harm. Oh, and Lord, even give us the strength that we need to be able to handle whatever comes our way. My God. Uh, don't you know you can ask God to go before you? Hallelujah. You, or, or you can ask God to go ahead and to take on whatever is lying in wait in your future. Oh, my God, today, uh, if we ever needed the Lord, we sure do need him now, right now. And, and not only just now, but I'm asking God, I mean, as we make the sacrifice of prayer and pushing our plate back and not indulging in food and, and things that give us pleasure, I'm asking God through my prayer, fasting, and sowing, God, I need you to go ahead 
I don't know what's going to happen, but I know, God, I can send your love and I can send your grace in front of us. I will make the sacrifice, God, for you to direct traffic in my life. Is there anybody that knows what I'm talking about? If you realize you need God to go before you, just put that in the comments. Lord, go before me. Hallelujah. Uh, you can ask God to get ahead and take on whatever is lying in wait in our future. Uh, this can be achieved through prayer, fasting, and sowing. Prayer, fasting, and sowing will yield positive results. Prayer, fasting, and sowing will bring the presence of God to your household. Yes, it will. To your family and your loved ones. Prayer, fasting, and sowing will open up the floodgates, hallelujah, of heaven. And although uh, everything around you may be in a barren state, Amen. Uh, everything around you may be in a wilderness experience. Amen. Through prayer, fasting, and sowing, which means dedication and consecrating your life to God, God will allow you, amen, to stand under, amen, an open heaven, my God. Amen. And let the rain come. Uh, amen, my God. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, let it rain on me. Mm. Let it rain. So today... I want to talk about fasting for supernatural results. Amen. We're going to be dealing with prayer, fasting, and sowing over the next few weeks. Amen. We want to fast and pray, amen, for supernatural results. Uh, the first element I want to talk about is fasting. Fasting has many benefits. There are many different variations of fasting. The Bible presents fasting as something that is good, profitable, and beneficial. The book of Acts records believers fasting before they made in important decisions. Mm -hmm. So you're going you're to need to fast and pray before you make any decisions on this year. Amen. As never before. Amen. We literally have to fast and pray to ask God, should I go left or should I go right? Fasting and prayer are often linked together as you look in Luke chapter 2, verse 37, and Luke chapter 5, verse 33. The Bible presents fasting as something that is good and profitable. Hallelujah. In our lesson today, the children of Israel were questioning God about his lack of response to their prayer and fasting. So God gives his response through the prophet Isaiah. You see in Isaiah 58 verse 1, amen, God tells Isaiah to cry aloud and spare not and to lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. In other words, God says, okay, you want to know why I'm not answering your prayer? You want to know why I'm not responding to your fast? Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to send my manservant uh, uh, Isaiah to Amen. Cry loud and I'm not going to spare your feelings. I'm going to tell you the truth. Sometimes, amen, people think that when truth comes our way, amen, that it's harsh or that the person that's telling you the truth doesn't love you. But I'm telling you, sometimes, well, a lot of time, all the time, dealing with truth causes you to take a real good look at the truth that you're in. My God, in other words, amen, sometimes it's not easy to hear the truth. Sometimes it's not easy to hear what will help you or what will bring change. But when a person comes giving you truth, amen, don't reject it. Don't get mad. Don't get in your feelings uh, because, amen, the person that's coming to tell you the truth, that is an act of love. And so God told Isaiah, they don't want to, they, they, they want to know why I don't answer their prayer. They, they, they want to know, they want to know why I'm not responding to their sackcloth and their ashes. They want to know why. 
This is it. I want you to cry aloud. Isaiah, and I want you to don't spare their feelings. Tell them the truth and so that we can get to a better place. Cry aloud and spare not. Tell my people their transgression. My God. Amen. If you're going to uh, serve God on this year, you got to deal with you. A lot of times we serve God from a vantage point of how we want to serve God. We, we live in this based upon how we think the Bible is interpreted as opposed to what God is really saying. But uh, if we're going to get answers from God, if we're going to get God to respond to us, I mean, we got to do it his way. Uh, his way is the only way. We got to come, amen, and bow down and understand our position as servant. God is the master, amen. Since when does the servant have the right to tell the master what they will or will not do? Uh, but that we have fallen into that state. We have fallen into that place. And so, amen, but if we're going to get answers from God, amen, moving forward, we're going to have to come and bow ourselves before him. Hallelujah. We're going to have to come and bow and say, Master, we are the servant. Lord, what would you have me to do? Uh, glory be to God. Amen. And, and God was letting them know um, he speaks loudly and directly. His people need to hear their transgression. Uh, but the question is, will they really hear? When the truth comes, y'all, will you really hear? When the word of God speaks to you, will you really listen? Amen. Amen. If, if I were you today, understanding that we are in the end times. Uh, the sun is almost down. We've been hearing that these are the last days ever since you've been born. But now we are seeing manifestation of things like we've never seen before. My God. And if you can't tell that... We are getting close to the rapture. If you can't tell that the Lord is on his way back, amen, amen, then something is wrong with you, my God. But, amen, anybody with the spiritual discernment can see the handwriting on the wall. I've said, amen, on many occasions, amen, for the Bible to be fulfilled. Like the book of Revelations, my God, amen, for the Bible to be fulfilled, my God, uh, America is going to have to be weakened, my God, amen, for the Bible to be fulfilled, America may not be the superpower that it once was, amen, and for the mark of the beast to come upon the land, amen, and for us to yield to it, this God-fearing nation, supposedly, is going to have to have a weaker position, and we see things happen happening all around us in the government, I mean, that is showing us that we are not as powerful as we once were. And this is just not, amen, thank you, Holy Ghost, this is just not, amen, uh, an occurrence. This is just not happening, amen, for now, but things are, as we progressively go through life, amen, thing the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, things are not going to get better, but they're going to get worse. Mm. But guess what? If you've got the power of God dwelling in you, if you got the favor of God dwelling in you, if you got the goodness of God dwelling in you, guess what? Even in the midst of horrible situations and circumstance, guess what? You'll be able to thrive and not just survive, but the blessing of God will it cover you and keep you even in the midst of chaos. Uh, somebody shout glory in your house. Uh, amen. That's why in this season, Amen. We can't afford to have a, a man, a, 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 a half hearted salvation. Uh huh. We can't afford to have a half hearted living holy and living saved. But all that's within you. I mean, we need to go after God passionately. We need to go after God with everything that's in you. You need to give God your best. Yes, 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 yes. You need to give God the best of everything that you have. You need to give God the best prayer time. You need to give God the best fasting. You need to give God the best sowing and gifting you can give him. You need to give God the best time and treasure you can give him, amen, so that 
you can make sure, amen, that you, amen, are in the will of God in this season. Amen. Clap your hands and shout glory. Uh, uh, he said, cry loud and spare not. He says, yet, now he begins in verse 2. He says, uh, yet they seek me daily. It wasn't that they wasn't praying. It wasn't that they weren't trying to worship or, or fast. He says, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteous and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask me the ordinance of justice, and they take delight in approaching God. It's not that they didn't pray on the conference prayer call. It's not that they didn't come on the Tuesday night Bible study and prayer meeting. Mm, but let's take a deeper look. First, God says, he, he describes the appearance that they gave. Mm -hmm. They gave the appearance, his people did, that they were holy. They gave the appearance that they were seeking after God. They gave the appearance that they were God chasers. But in reality, they exuded the behavior talked about in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. And when Timothy, amen, Paul wrote to Timothy, he summed it up like this. He said, uh, they have a form of godliness but are really denying the power thereof. My God. They seek me daily and delight to know my ways. On the surface, it appeared that God's people loved him and they were devoted to him. They had the reputation uh, of a nation that did righteousness. Huh? And they looked like people who would take delight in approaching God. Uh, and God said, that's the appearance that you all give. But really, you just have a form of godliness. But you're denying the power and the righteousness thereof. Verse 3 said, wherefore, and so they told God. Hmm, I don't have time to dwell with having a form of godliness. That's another message. Huh? Amen. But in this season, we can't just have a form of sanctification. We can't just appear to be holy. Amen. But we got to be holy. Amen. And do this thing like the Bible say. I know I'm making some people uncomfortable, but that's all right because that's what love does. Love, the, love will, the love of God will force you to deal in truth. And can't nobody point the finger at nobody else. That's what, amen, some folks have mastered the art of deflection. We can see the wrong in everybody else. Amen, which is a diversionary tactic in, instead of looking at the wrong in ourselves. But on this morning, I implore you, I beseech you, my brother and my sister, that you would just take, amen, the focus off of somebody else, amen, and say, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. It's me, God, I need a touch from you. I need change. I need a closer walk with thee. Hallelujah. I, I, I want you to get your heart set to fast. I want you to get your heart set to pray for the next 21 days so God can, amen, prophesy to your existence. Mm -hmm. Wherefore you have fasted, uh, they say. We fasted, God, and don't you see? Wherefore have we afflicted our souls, and thou hast taken no knowledge? They were bewildered. Why? And they said, God, we're praying. We're fasting. He said, behold, in the days of your fast, we find pleasure and exact all your labors. So God, they're saying, they're asking God, well, we have fasted. We have been on the Zoom prayer line. We have been on the conference call in prayer. Uh, but God, it doesn't seem. He said, and they were asking God, don't you see? <laughs> uh, with this spiritual veneer that they had on, they felt God was being unfair to them. Uh, Lord, we have fasted, but don't, don't you still, uh, uh, why won't you still answer our prayers? Uh, don't you know that we seek you daily? The people was telling God, don't you know that we seek you daily? Don't you know that we do what we're supposed to do? We delight to know your ways and do righteousness and take delight in approaching you. 
yet you do not answer our prayers. Hmm. Sounds like something that might be occurring today. Uh, but when you look through verses 3 and 5 in that same chapter, glory be to God, God exposes their shallow worship. In, in, in other words, the Lord, in his reply, gets real with his people. Amen. And I'll tell you today, if you, if you want to be real with God, God will be real with you. As a matter of fact, he said, now we're getting down to it. Uh, no more surface shallow worship. Amen. But, amen, uh, God says, I'm looking for true worshipers. Uh, I'm looking for people that will worship me in spirit and in truth. I got to get out of here. My God. Uh, God lets them know that their motives for fasting were misdirected. Uh-huh. He lets them know. Uh, that their motive, uh, he told them, my God, uh, their motive for fasting was off kilter. In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. The reality was that his people didn't fast with the right heart. And they did it only as an empty ritual. The reality was that even on a day when they fasted, they mistreated their employees. <laughs> they mistreated their workers and their, their slave labor. They mistreated those that they employed. And, and because of this, God didn't accept their fasting. Uh, when it wasn't uh, connected with a sincere heart of obedience. See, God doesn't have to take just any old thing that we decide to give him. Just because we put a religious, oh, thank you, Jesus. Just because we put a religious label on it, huh, don't mean that God is satisfied with it. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I, I better say that again. Just because we put a religious label on it, it doesn't mean that God is satisfied with it. Mm. Huh, somebody's catching what I'm saying. He told them in the fourth verse, Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Yet you shall not fast as you do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. You see, mm -hmm, this struck a chord with me because even on this week, we saw uh, people, amen, marching for strife and debate. We saw something that we've never seen before in our country. I got to talk about it. I got to talk about it. Thank you, Jesus. We saw uh, a march like another on the U.S. Capitol uh, of our great nation. Mm. We saw thousands and thousands of people. There's nothing wrong with peaceful protest. Uh, I do not condone any protest that ends in looting, stealing, fighting, uh, or the loss of life. Uh, uh, but you can make an impact being peaceful. But on this week, we saw something here in the United States. We saw uh, a dec amen, my God, we saw a deplorable uh, demonstration on our nation's capital. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You see, uh, uh, people can protest all they want. I mean, but, but when you, uh, the, the U.S. Capitol is a symbol to the world for what democracy should look like. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. The U.S. Capitol, someone, I heard even one of the newscasters say that the U.S. Capitol represents a temple of democracy. Amen. But on this week, amen, we saw, amen, that temple of democracy, amen, uh, desecrated. Uh, we saw, amen, the temple of democracy for the symbol of democracy for the United States desecrated like we've never seen before. My God, today. Is that because, amen, something went wrong. Uh, the motive went wrong. 
And then five people so far have lost their life because of this wrong, having a wrong motive for the march. My God. Same thing as it pertains. My, my, my father always said, amen, God always shows demonstration in the natural and for the same things that go spiritually. So here, the people of God were fasting with the wrong empty motive. They didn't fast with the right heart. They were fasting for strife and debate. My God. Amen. They were fasting uh, indeed. Amen. They fasted for their own personal needs. And certainly, amen, uh, they, uh, but selfish needs. It was their, they were selfish about their desires. Uh, they fasted for things like, Lord, help me win this argument. Uh, they was fasting to say, Lord, help me defeat this person and that person. They were praying and fasting that Lord uh, would, would strike down people that they didn't like. Uh, they had the, the wrong motive. They were praying the wrong thing. They were praying and fasting for the wrong way. Though their prayer was accompanied with fasting, it was still selfish, even a wicked prayer. Uh, so, so in essence, God says, you want to know why uh, I'm not answering you? Because I can't, I can't go for that. I, I can't answer no wicked prayer. I, I don't care how much food you uh, don't eat. I can't answer no selfish prayer. Uh, I'm not going to answer. Uh, I am God. I don't have to answer uh, prayers that are misdirected. The purpose of their fasting was to glorify themselves, to make their voice heard on high. I'm in the scriptures, y'all. God said, hallelujah, no more will you fast as you do on this day. And God is saying that to the church. I don't know how you fasted or prayed before, but God said, no more. Amen. I'm not, I'm not answering it. I'm not going to hear selfish prayer. I'm not going to hear selfish and see wicked fasting. Uh, um, but I'm going to lend my ear, huh? amen, to those that have a clean hands and a pure heart. Uh, uh, can I help somebody? In verse 5, God asks his people, do you think that this is the kind of fasting that I, I've chosen? He said, in other words, uh, let me know. Is, is this the fast, the kind of fasting that you think I want? This selfish, prideful, self-centered fasting and praying? God says, no. The kind of fasting God rebukes here is a hollow, empty show without the spiritual substance behind it. Mm -hmm. This isn't the kind of fast God has chosen, even though they did all the right things, even, in, even though they uh, clapped their hands the right way, even though, amen, they bowed their heads and, and, and bowed down their heads like a bulrush and spread out sackcloth and ashes, uh, God says, don't even call that a fast. Uh, the people of Isaiah's day had the same problem as the Pharisees of Jesus' day. Uh, they trusted in empty ritual, my God, apart from the true spiritual reality. Because you see, real fasting that is partnered with real repentance, uh -huh, real fasting is partnered with real repentance and isn't only about image, but it has great power before God, according to Matthew 17 and 21. God sees through the hypocrisy of empty religious rituals, uh, including fasting. But in, in verse 6, uh-huh, God lets us know clearly, verse 6 and 7, God reveals the type of fasting, of fasting and prayer that is pleasing to him. He says, is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness. Yes, God. Hallelujah. To undo 
the heavy burdens. I said I wasn't going to preach like that. Uh huh. Uh huh. And to let the oppressed go free. Uh, yes, God. Uh, that ye break every yoke. Uh, my God. Uh, saints of God. Uh, God is calling for a fast uh, that will loose the bands of wickedness. Uh, amen. Over this generation. Uh, God is calling for a fast. Uh, amen. That will break generational curses uh, over your house. Uh, God is calling for a fast. Uh, not just to say I'm fasting and have a sad face. Uh, Amen. But God is looking for a fast uh, and a prayer life. Uh, amen. That will literally destroy the yoke. Uh, amen. That is over your house. Uh, am I talking to somebody today? Uh, yes, God. Uh, God is looking for the fast. Uh, amen. That will cause your health to spring forth. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, came to challenge you uh, amen yes Lord uh, to let your fast uh, amen not just to be because and say I'm fasting for the next 21 days uh, but God said in this fast uh, I want you to pour your heart out uh, I want you to cry out to me uh, as never before uh, I want you to let your eyes uh, gush with tears yes lord i want you to open your heart and say lord here i am lord do a new thing in me lord wash me purify me anoint me yes Lift your hands and shout glory. Glory. Yes, God. God is looking for a fast uh, that will cause you. Uh, amen. We're not at the church right now. Uh, we can't come together and worship. Uh, but that doesn't mean uh, that you can't go out. Uh, and still be a witness uh, God said grab some of them clothes uh, amen that's hanging up in your closet uh, that you can't even fit no more uh, they still good clothes uh, but put them clothes in a car uh, and look for somebody uh, amen that you can bless uh, I don't hear nobody talking uh, somebody that needs some clothes uh, Look for somebody that's hungry uh, and then out on the street uh, and give them some food. Uh, say yes. Uh, look for somebody uh, that's down and out uh, that you can lift their spirit uh, fast uh, and pray uh, so that you get up. Uh, somebody say, get up. Uh, get up. Uh, and go out uh, and show the love of God uh, that you clothe the naked. Uh, don't hide. Uh, God said, don't hide. Uh, don't hide my blessing uh, that I have bestowed on you. Uh, but when I bless you, uh, you're supposed to bless somebody else. Uh, somebody shout glory. Glory. Who am I talking to? Uh, God said, Fast and pray uh, and seek my face uh, like never before. Uh, seek my face uh, until change comes. Uh, seek my face uh, until the yoke is destroyed uh, because of the anointing. Uh, he said, Then uh, and only then uh, shall the light. Uh, break forth uh, as the morning uh, and thine health uh, shall spring forth uh, speedily uh, somebody uh, coming out of this fast uh, you can worry uh, about your physical health uh, but in this fast uh, over the next 21 days uh, God's getting ready uh, I said God's getting ready to do the miraculous. God's getting ready 
to heal your body. God's getting ready to lift your burden. God's getting ready to do something in your life that he's never done before. Say yeah. Yeah. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord for what God is about to do at your house. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. God's about to, to loose the heavy burden. God's about to, to bring change. God's about to uh, do a new thing. God's about to uh, make the crooked places straight. Say yeah. Yes, God. Come on and bless him. Come on and magnify him. Come on, come on. You're about to pass for supernatural. You're about to pass for supernatural results. You're fasting for supernatural healing. You're fasting for supernatural prosperity. You're fasting for supernatural deliverance. You're fasting for supernatural results. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and worship. Get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready. God's about to move. God's about to shake. God's about to break the back of the enemy through your prayer, through your seeking. God's about to prophesy to your January, to your February, to your March, April, May, to your June and July. God's about to go before you in August, September, October, November, and December because the sacrifice if you believe it you ought to get excited right there in your living room I want you to get excited get excited for what God's about to unleash Oh, right there prophesy to your January and February tell them God do it do it do it do it do it God's getting ready to give you the strength God's getting ready to give you the strength God's getting ready to give you the fortitude these next 21 days are an investment for the rest of this year come on come on don't tell, don't let the devil tell you, I can't do it. Remember, find a way. You got to find a way to break in to the anointing. You got to find a way to press into your future. You got to find a way to press into the favor of God. You got to find a way. Don't let the devil steal your joy. For the joy, the joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Go ahead and bless him. your blessing. Go ahead and get your miracle. I want you to get excited. You're about to give the devil a black eye. 
with your prayer, your fasting, and your sowing. Bless God, bless the great God from Zion. I felt that in my spirit. The old saints used to say, the glory of the Lord is coming down. They would say, the glory of the Lord is coming down when the saints begin to pray. And the Lord will have his way. Somebody say, oh, the glory of the Lord is coming down. Whether you're a member of this church or not, I want you to join in the fast and I want you to make the sacrifice. Yes, fasting does have life benefits. It can be beneficial to your health. Amen. But we're not just fasting for the sake of fasting, but we're fasting for supernatural results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're fasting that generational yokes will be destroyed because of the anointing. Curses. We're fasting so that the spirit of poverty and the spirit of lack will be vanquished. Hallelujah. The spirit of rejection must be devoured by the spirit of faith. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to join us over the journey of these next 21 days, starting tonight at midnight, January 11th through January 31. Then on January 31, I want you to prepare a first fruit seed. We'll be preaching about the law of the first fruit. Will you give God the whole of something? It could be a day's pay, a week's pay, Amen. But I, I, I gave God, I'm giving God my whole stimulus check and then some because I want God. Uh, I'm asking. Well, I'll tell you what the Lord told me to ask for. Uh, as you sow a seed, a significant seed into, into this ministry, God is speaking to you now. On January 31st, you have to prepare this one. Amen. When we give the, the first fruit offering after coming out of this fast, you're going to see God do. He's going to go before you. I decree and I declare, I prophesy to you now. He's going to go before you into your January, your February. He's going to protect us from dangers seen and unseen. He's going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. The Lord told me I need at least, at least 25 people who will sow a first fruit seed of $1,000. Amen. I'm one of them. Huh? So I need 24 more people. Amen. By January 31st. January 31st is the last Sunday and the last day. And we solved the, the law of the first fruit in the first month of the year, asking God to prophesy to the rest of the year to go before us. And God has done just that. Anybody that's participated in this special offering, this is not your tithe. This is, not, uh, this is a special gift that we give to God in the first month of the year that will cause the favor of God to go before you, along with our prayer and dedication and daily sacrifice. God is speaking to now at least 25 people that, that on January 31st will release a $1,000 seed and say, God, I want you to go before me. 
I know I feel God it's going to be I believe thank you Holy Ghost it's going to be more than that but first we must come before God and prepare to bring a sacrifice some of you have never sown a thousand dollars in the kingdom my God but I challenge you to get out of your comfort zone and this year y'all we still dealing with this pandemic yes the vaccines are here but they 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 may not get those vaccines out we 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 may be here for a while go and be to God and just because you get to get a vaccine don't mean that you still won't get sick we need God like never before in my closing prayer today we must do our first things first I want to prepare you for the fast I'm sanctifying the fast as we pray now we prepare to prepare this house to go through and tell God I'm going through God not with empty rituals not not and prayer and fasting go hand in hand you must feed on the word of God where you won't eat food whether you go from 12 midnight to 12 or 12 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon or some folks are going to fast 24 hours however the Lord leads you but just be prepared God receive my sacrifice and when you're fasting you read the word of God and you pray so you feed your spiritual man while you afflict this fleshly man and you watch God do miraculous things in your life bow your heads lift your hands as we read from the book of Joel chapter 1 verse 14 sanctify ye a fast call a solemn assembly gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land unto the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord Father we sanctify this fast, this consecration, this time of prayer, fasting, and sowing. God, I know what you told me. I know what you told me to tear the people. We're to call for the fast that looses the bands of wickedness, that lifts the heavy burden, God, that destroys the yokes off of our lives. We sanctify this fast. Yadabahose. God, give us the strength to go through for these next 21 days. Give us the strength, God, to resist the devil, the urges. Mm, the body doesn't like to be brought under subjection. The body doesn't like to, to, to be denied the pleasures of food and drink. And, but God, we're doing this not as an empty ritual. But Lord, we want power with you. Hallelujah. God, we want you to go before us. Hallelujah. We don't know what lies ahead, God, but we want you to go before us. It's like John the Baptist did, Jesus, God. We want you to prepare our way. Hallelujah. We don't know what's going to happen in February or March. Oh, April, May, June. But God, if you go before us, everything will be all right. And God, if you go before us, we'll be strengthened enough to deal with whatever comes our way. I bind the work of Satan. Right now, Satan is trying to give people double-mindedness and whisper in their ear, don't do it. You know you got to take medicine. Don't do it. You know. Yeah, but God, where there's a will, there's a way. I'm telling folk, take your medicine, but fast. Do what you got to do, but fast. Fast for those children. Fast for your grandchildren. Fast and pray, God, that God would send deliverance to your generations. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, when we come out of this, when we come out on the other side, God, we're going to be more anointed. God, we're going to be more watchful. God, we're going to be more willing. God, we're going to be more prosperous. God, we're going to be more blessed. God, we're going to be more ready to serve 
in the kingdom as never before. I thank you in advance. Hallelujah. Oh, mama. God, I feel your glory. Huh? I feel your presence, God. I thank you for sick bodies being healed. I thank you, God, for cancers being removed and diabetes being brought under control and being removed. I, I, God be the able I got sicknesses that have been worried. Joint pain and back pain is about to be healed in the name of Jesus. Relationships that were broken about to be replenished, God. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for those that will respond to the first fruit that we're going to sow coming out of this fast to God say here it is God here's an offering that's out of my comfort zone tell mama and God I'm going to give it to you because I need you to give me what I need God to make it through this new season I thank you God because I already know you answered somebody's prayer today. They may get it 21 days from now, but you're already releasing miracles. You're already releasing healing. God, on day one. And I thank you. And I bless you. In Jesus' name. Look, stay connected. These next few weeks, tell somebody. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I've seen the miracle working power of God. I've seen God do the miraculous in the life of people. I get testimonies of what God has done in people's lives that walk in obedience. And even to this principle of prayer, fasting, and first fruiting, sowing God. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss your opportunity to band yourself with other believers that know they need God in this season. Stay tuned. Stay connected. Get connected. Tell somebody what's going on here at the path. If you need a miracle, God is in the miracle working business. And we're going to be praying and crying out to God for the next 21 days and fasting like never before. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready for your breakthrough. Connect with us. Like us. Share us. Become a part of us. Subscribe to us. Amen. We welcome you. Put it in the comments. Write a note. Amen. And we'll contact you. Send your prayer requests so that we can pray over them. Let us know. And we'll be looking for you to join us in the days ahead. God bless you. We'll see you on next week. May the peace of God dwell in your hearts and rule in your minds is our prayer in Jesus' name. God bless you.